Hey guys, Jules here. Got another video for you. Um, happy Sabbath to you. Just want to give God the glory for all dreams, visions, and words of knowledge. Thank you, Father God, for all the dreams, visions, and words of knowledge. Thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing for us, showing us, guiding us. We just praise you and we worship you, Lord. You are everything to us. Nothing comes between you and, and us, Lord, and me. Thank you, Father God. Amen. So, hey guys. Um, hope you guys are having a great week. I'm here at another park. A, a park in a dream represents um, a place of rest. And um, and so that's where I'm at here, just uh, taking it easy, enjoying the sun today. I'm here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, <clears throat> uh, I wanted to ask that you would be in continued prayer for the miracle about the land God showed me in a vision that he wanted us to have revival on. Um, and obviously that has not happened. So we are still praying. The team is worshiping every day. We're praying every day. And um, God has revealed to us that um, he is taking us through a, kind of a, a, a flesh farm in a sense where we're working off the flesh and um, fasting a lot and, uh, you know, kind of um, he's refining us. So he's refining us for service. And... Um, so I asked the Lord today, I said, Lord, what would you like me to speak on? Uh, you know, and he said, speak against sin. He goes, there's a, still a lot of sin. That, And so he gave me a dream. It's a 156, number 156 dream where the Lord showed me the church is taking its time getting to where God wants them to be. So this brings me to what time is it? What time do you think it is? What are we? Uh, what are we on the timeline? Where are we? You know? God's timeline, that is, we're at midnight. There was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. That's Matthew 25, 6. So we are we are just past Revelation 6, I feel. The seals have been opened. It's midnight in the political order. It is midnight in the social order. It's midnight in the spiritual order. Um, you know, when, when they said peace and safety in September 2021, I believe the conqueror with the bow rides the right horse at that point. And um, if you go research that, they set that statue in front of the United Nations in New York City. Um, and also they had secret meetings and different things like that. If you, if you Google that or search that, you'll find. And they, I think I've heard that they've since removed that beast statue from uh, in front of the United Nations. The red horse rides, that's conflict on earth. And we know there's conflict on earth and it's been escalated with Ukraine and um, Russia. And now China is joining in. Um, so what's next? The black horse rides, famine has started. It's already started. Um, next, the pale horse, death and haze. So these are the things that are coming. So, you know, the Lord will be speak against sin. Many of you are not turning to him and you're not trying to stop your sin and your flesh from ruling you. The Lord said these topics would make you mad. Some of you would stomp away and, and be offended. So who's focused on seeking the kingdom of God? Are you really? Are you praying to God every day? Are you worshiping God every day? Are you communing and reading God's word and with your eyes on the page of his word? Bible every day? Are you doing that every day? If you're not doing these things every day, then you're not seeking the kingdom of God. You are letting the cares of the world rule you, like Martha did. She was so cared about everything else. And when the when when the Son of God was in her own home, in Luke 12, 31, Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And when you do this, all these things will be handed to you. Who is seeking God? I ask the question again. Who who of you are really pushing in and seeking God? Some of you are seeking God, but you're still letting the demons rule you. I can't I can't tell you. Many of you are are housing demons. And the, and the Lord has shown me not only me but others on our on our team that many believers have demons and unclean spirits. So God is giving our team many many dreams every night two and three dreams a person. And um, so our team now has four people on the team. And um, when we do get this revival started, um, you will get to meet those folks. But um, 
they are easy. So, so the demons are easy to pick up, and they they can get into you on when you when you have an offense, when you sin, you open the doors, and you know the Lord has shown us that many people in the church today have demonic spirits in them. So some of you have unclean spirits, you have demons that have come into you with legal rights based on sins committed from your parents, from your grandparents, and back to several generations. So, um, and, and, and so you have to get those clean, things cleansed. And basically just going to the altar and, and saying, Jesus, which, please forgive me for my sins, that is not enough. And so in, in Jesus' day, he, he cast out many, many demons. So in Galatians 5, 19 through 23, the Lord says, speak about, speak against sin, right? So now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outburst of wrath. Yeah. So has your husband or your wife made you mad and you, you had an outburst? You had contention with them? Maybe you have contention with your with your family, like your children, or maybe maybe you have contention with your your parents. Um, so, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me say that again: those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I hope you're hearing me today i hope you hear me father god i just pray lord holy spirit i just pray that you send this message to who needs to hear it let it sink deep into their heart and let them take it uh, for the value that it is which is very valuable but the fruit of the spirit is love joy long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is no law and in james 4 17 um so whosoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. So many of you are allowing the flesh to rule you. Yeah, with food, cars, houses, your everyday things, running your kids to the all the different activities. Um, a good sign of housing demons is addictions. Like, for example, food. I just said that, food. Substances. What kind of substance? It's like drugs, either illegal or illegal. Oh, yeah, but the doctor said if I don't take this, I'm going to die. Yeah, but does the doctor rule over you or does, does Jesus? Jesus is the great physician. He's the healer. What about marijuana? I spoke about marijuana before. Marijuana is a deceiving spirit. When you, when you take a drag off of marijuana, you are sucking in deceiving spirits into your heart, into your, your body sexual devices and vices sexual vices and, and the biggest one of all is i mentioned it now two times this is the third time which is food food drives us all right but god to move closer to god you have to start um you know you have to start trimming the flesh and what that means is to to cause your flesh um to take a back seat so if if your flesh wants food, then um, tell your tell your flesh no. You're not going to get food. And you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I gotta eat. I gotta eat. I gotta, I gotta, um, you know. But start off slow. Reduce. Take take um, you know, take uh, maybe like the Lord started with me. He he, he had me um, um, not not drink soda anymore. And then he had me to cut out all foods that had sugar in it. And, and then he had me to, to even reduce even more. And, and so and he you know, told me no fast food. And, and he, so all these things, he slowly took me through this, right? And so, you know, take, you know, go to the Lord. Go to the Lord and ask him what you want me to do, Lord, because I want to, I want to press into you. If you don't care about pressing into God, I'm not sure why you even watch this video. But I want you to—I want you to know I care about you. You're my brother, or you're my sister in Christ, and I care about you. And I want you to press in, and I want you—I want you to go to heaven. I want you to have the good things of God. But remember, this little race of faith on earth is a test. It's a test to see what you will do. It's a test. 
And so what will you do? It, you know, you can go cold turkey on drinking coffee. Then you, you know, that's a good example. Coffee is, if, if, um, if you can't go cold turkey on coffee, then you're addicted to it. And see, addictions are, are, um, are indications of a, a unclean spirit, some type of spirit. So if you can go, to, can go, can go cold turkey on not drinking coffee, then, then um, you don't have it. But now, if you get mad, if you get mad because I say coffee, if you're addicted to coffee, it can be an unclean spirit. There, that that's an indication. That's an indication right there that if you get mad at me saying that, that there's an issue. You follow me? You should. It should not bother you that I say to you that coffee can be addiction. And I'm, I know, I know, I've been in, in this redemption process for a while now, and I see, uh, and, and you know, delivery also. I, I see people that are delivered from addict, addiction to coffee, and they and they say all the time, they say, "Oh my gosh, I've just been delivered from coffee," and they think, "I never knew I was addicted to it." Yeah, God, God was wants to deliver you, but if you go back to that, then you're just opening the door. You're opening the door for, um, for more demons to come in, fresh ones. You know, so, you know, seriously, get down on your hands and knees and ask God, Lord, show me, show me what I'm addicted to. Show me, Lord. If you do that, God will show you. So, you know, if, if you, um, if you failed, you came up short, you were disappointed. When that happens, you need a picker upper. Now tell me if this is, this is, you know, think about it. Sometimes all of us, we, when we fail, we, we, we disappointed someone or what have you, we, um, we seem to, um, we seem to need a picker upper, right? And let me tell you, I was delivered. I was delivered. And I, I, I know I've been there, uh, men and women, you, you, some of you go to your secret place. You are fantasizing, you're masturbating. Men are fantasizing about women who are not their wives. Women are fantasizing about men who are not their husbands. Um, you're fantasizing about homes. You're fantasizing about owning a, a sailboat, for example. Um, single men and women fantasizing about fornication while performing masturbation. And this fantasy leads to even more lewd sexual fantasies. This is away from Jesus. This is sin. In John, 1 John 3, 8, it says, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil is of being is it, the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Some of you will repent and so, and, and the same hour will turn around and do it again. You will feel bad. And you will hate yourself for it. You cry out to God to help. You overcome the sin. You, you try. You try your best. But the truth of the matter is uh, you can't overcome the sin because unclean spirits rules you. It manipulates you. And it controls you. So why have you delayed? Why have you delayed? Let me just see where I'm at here. So why have you delayed giving yourself over to the King of Kings? Why have you delayed giving your heart to Jesus? This side of judgment or that side? I keep saying that. This side of judgment or that side? Which will it be? Which will it be? In 1 Corinthians 3, 1, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as the, to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes of Christ. So what he's saying here, Paul writ wrote first and second Corinthians he's saying that um, that some of you are acting like babes in Christ many of you are still babes you're 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 not you you haven't matured up some of you are 35 and 40 years old and you still act like a child in, in Christ so see if if any of these characteristics fit your description always wants your way when you don't when you don't get it you throw a temp temper tantrum. Cannot learn difficult lessons. You are stuck in a loop. 
in the school of hard knocks. You keep going back through it. You keep going back through it. You, you keep having these situations. You have, you may have success in dollars. You have a fine house. You have a nice car, but you know in your heart you live in a cesspool. You're in a pig pen. A quarrel comes easy to you. You find yourself ex having little explosions, personal personality explosions, right? Um, you are possessive. You have multiple personalities. You always need to be taught. You can't dig into the word on your own. Frequently saying the wrong things. You always say the wrong things. You have double-mindedness. You deny God's word and believe it was for a different time. Time. That brings me back to time. It's time. It's midnight. The hour is late. Judgment is at the door. Oh, but Jules... Everybody has been saying something is going to happen, but nothing has happened yet. Jules, you have been saying it's coming for 76 videos now, but where is the evidence? And I say mockers and scoffers. It's coming. It's coming. So in Joel 2.13, it says, So rend your heart, not your garments. Rend your heart. Look that up. Search that. Rend your heart. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and he relents from doing harm many of you are trying but you're not pressing in hard enough you're not seeking his face you have to be steadfast in the race of faith are you hiding running from god and his calling many of you think you have more time time is up it's midnight time is up Time is something you do not have. In Isaiah 64, 6, But we all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We, are, we all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. So we all have sin. We all have unclean things that we have to work through. But walking the faith, the race of faith, is a steadfast walk. And you have, to, um, you have to stay committed. You have to uh, continue to press in. And you're going to go down. It's like a roller coaster ride, right? It's, a, it's definitely a roller coaster ride. You'll have some low spots, but then you'll have some high spots. In Philippians 3.8, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. So if you want Christ, you have to you have to lose things. Brothers and sisters, you have to lose things. You have to let them go. You have to let all those worldly possessions go. You have to, the desires for the, the things of the world, you have to let them go. So whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And this is Revelations 3, 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Also, I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And that's Jesus. So he he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches and to the believers in the churches. And that's what God's, that's what Jesus is saying. Many of you, many of you need a, a cleanup. You need cleansing and you need to uh, cleanse yourself from your sins and from those demonic spirits and from those unclean spirits that you have in you, harboring. You know who you are. You know when you have something in you. God had told me about 90% of Christians have have um, evil spirits in them. So on, on 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Ephesians 5, 18, and, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So the church altar is the communal place where we drink of the Spirit. And we go there and we, we confess our sins. And your altar can be anywhere. 
Your altar can be in your house. Your altar can be in your car. You know, you go to the altar and you confess your sins and you and you pour out your heart to God. You pour out your heart to Jesus. Jesus is the great uh, Redeemer. He, he can heal you. And, but you have to turn your focus to Him and not to the things of the world. You know, I've spoke about it many times. Jesus is the healer. Turn to Jesus for your healing. So, brothers and sisters, I love you very much, and I appreciate you. And um, still having a lot of dreams. Our team is focused on uh, cleansing our cleansing ourselves and getting ready for revival. And um, we continue to pray daily. We worship God daily. And um, we've actually started uh, around the two days before the 11th, so that would be the 9th, I guess. We started a corporate uh, prayer session and, and also uh, worship. And we read the Bible on our own. And we're all having dreams. God is speaking to us through that. So, um, yeah, it's been amazing. And we're learning so much. And um, so it's been uh, it's been great. It's been great. The walk has, has been you know, it's been uh, challenging to some degree, but this is, the, this is the race of faith. This is the race of faith. So, love you guys so much. Um, you know, I'd like to hear your comments. Um, let me know how you're doing. Let me know if you're pressing in, if you're, if you're um, feeding the flesh, if you, if you need prayer, just submit. But listen, I, I want to encourage you that, again, we, we're still fasting. We still have our Monday through Wednesday fast. Um, just this uh, email me, open eyesofheart at gmail.com and we can get you on the prayer list so we will be uh, holding another fast on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and coming off the fast on Thursday morning and so we encourage you to join in and be part of that. Just email me and we'll be praying for you and our corporate prayer and um, well, many of us are fasting as well so uh, we just encourage you to join us and be part of that. We love you very much and take care. Until next time, Jules out.